Greetings and welcome to another Planet Zoo video. This is Six Birds in a Trench Coat returning to our Exhibitat Zoo for a special DLC version. Let me put up a couple of boxes first. There we are, some trees, some bushes, a little flower bed at the end. I also added a apparently much needed vending machine area here. And right there, there's an empty spot for a restaurant. But we're not going to be putting in a restaurant right now. We're going to be putting in a wombat. So let's see. I want to breed them. One offspring per meeting event. So if we have two adults, one baby, 293. Doable. Let's do it. No, they're so cute. Okay, let's make them happy. Don't like the long grass, but you like lots of soil. Okie dokie. There we go. Now you like your terrain. What else do you want? You want more space. Hmm, so how are we gonna make this place pretty? Should we build Ayers Rock? I mean, that's gonna be kind of difficult. But maybe, I mean, I think the idea is good. But apart from it needing to be lower and having a ramp, I think it's too thick. So, let's try that one again. Um, maybe. That's gonna work, I think. Now before we put a roof on it, let's check the traversable area and see if they can actually walk through these things. Uh, none of them, actually. So let's make all of them one wider. Actually, what about now? Okie dokie. See, now they're all kind of the same size and I don't like that. So instead we're gonna take two of you over there, two of you, and then delete you, you, over here, you, like that. What about now? Yes, so that works. Now they can use all of them. And we did severely reduce their traversable area, but this also gives us a nice big space for plants. So the question is, do we use these? No, we do not. Can it go in here? Mud pan. Because that gives us the panels. Now over here, I want them above the door. Not that it actually matters for the keepers, but it does look pretty stupid when keepers are suddenly glitching through the top of this thing. I'm gonna grab all of it, make it a bit higher, and yes, I am fully aware of the fact that I now have gaps. That shall be fixed. I'm just gonna grab three of these and then sort of thunk them down front, over here, overlapping everything. Bloop. Yeah, that's fine. Now we're going to take these two instead and plop them down here. It's beginning to look a lot like nature. Excellent. Then, before we do anything else with this, let's just recolor it. I think it needs to be... Ooh, not that much more yellow. That looks very pink. There we go. Now it works really well with the stones. So I'm just going to use these to follow the edge of this, making sure that it does not do 
thing that I don't want it to do, which is peeking out. This is what we want to avoid. Then let's go in here, grab the huge one. We're gonna put the one here and avoid the glitchy flickering. And then we need a ramp because right now they can't get up there. And it needs to be at least as wide as these doors. I wonder how steep of a ramp they are capable of using. Going to assume that they can use something that steep. Yes! Now let's see. Little sweet, not you. You! 323. Cool. We got all the space we need. Just gonna make all of this in here soil because that just makes more sense. So much clicking and like, glitching off the camera. There we go. So that is all soil. Gonna just make the edge of it a little more like that. And then make all of this out here very heavily grass. Because they also want grass. But also like this. Okie dokie. Let's see. How much more grass do you want? I know you want more long grass. You're happy with your short- Oh, that can actually go down to nothing. But you do need a bit of long grass. Well, you're gonna get that. That works. Food enrichment. Ooh, you like the barrel feeder. And the thing about these ramps is it seems that the keepers can also use them. And I think I'm gonna recolor it. Green? Gray? Yeah, let's go with gray. Brownish gray. Should we also give you guys a melon? I really, actually really want to see a wombat eat a melon. So let's give you guys a melon. Right there. Okay, so this area looks really flat, and it definitely needs more plant-ishness. There is going to be bedding everywhere except inside the cave. We can live with that, because the bedding is trying to look like plants. Okay, toys. What do you like? You like what? Now, I know I said I wanted another ball. This is not what I meant. This is really not what I meant. I hate it. Yeah, that's cute. You can go rub up against the bark. Right there. Put that one over here. And a little herby scenty thingy. Here. Bloop. So we can still see the pile of herbs, but not the ugly plate thingy. Are you happy? Yeah. Let's just make their back wall not boring and also give them some more plants. I am going to just copy this thing. And actually, let's just sort of put these back here. So how much Plant growth will you accept? Haha, <laughs> not much. Well, we're sort of trying to do an Australian outback look. So maybe this stuff is actually a bit too dark and lush looking. There we go. So reduced it, but did not completely get rid of it. Now let's look at nature. Plants. The bracken, I love that stuff. The reeds. But these will really take... Uh, let's not do a line to surface. So these will take a lot of your traversable area. And plus, you don't... You know... Ah! Also! <laughs> that, that. Food and water. Yes, please, water. Put this thing up here. And then we can grab the three of you. Copy. Zzzt. I mean, that only looks a little bit stupid. Yeah. I mean, I do think we need another layer in here. There we go. Absolutely. Hide the ugly water thing. 
Now the reason why I use the ugly water thing is twofold. One, the keepers don't have to refill it. And two, it doesn't need a water cleaning facility. In fact, this is the only thing that lives up to both of those requirements. You can put in a pond or this thing and the keepers won't have to refill it, but the pond will have to be cleaned. How does this stuff in here look? I mean, kinda, kinda, kinda okay. Let's just say that. So, to make sure that you don't get too many plants, we can put that one on. And then we're gonna go back and look at the freaking plants for the, like, 18th time. Cornflower meadow. Not really a fan of that. Nope. You not get- <gasps> These are so pretty! And they would look amazing growing on a piece of wood, but this is not wood. Silky oak tree. A <laughs> little bit big. That is a possibility. Ooh, yes. Yeah, that, those are the ones I want. These, and I'm putting them really close to the wall here because that is already not traversable. So I am hoping that the traversability of the habitat as a whole will not be reduced too much. Let's put this in the corner. That's me in the corner. So we're almost actually already at, can we put, we can put one of these things in here and it looks really good, but the uh, people can't actually see it right there, now can they? This is smaller. Does this make sense? I kind of think it does. What if we put one here? Can we, uh, is this possible? It is. That works. Yes. And we can also yeah, maybe get rid of you. If we put you in there, not the way that you're placed. Yes. Because then we can have a total of three of these. I wonder. I wonder. Can we place you over here? And then take you and move you over here instead and also flip you around so that and also nope i want one more i want what about this oh wait that was the big one oh that would actually look so good right there but so bad out here do we care do we, do we care about that? You know what? No, we don't, because it looks so good that way. Can you be brought out a little tiny bit? Now, what is your traversable area? Before we put in all the plants, it was 325, and now it is 292, so it's a significant reduction. How much would you need if you can have a baby? 293 so one more you know what i think we can give you that even though one square meter doesn't really make a huge difference now they have everything the doctor prescribed except information you are in the way move your blooming vet research complete finally and now it's snowing the animals in the wombat habitat, uh, those are called wombats. Idiot. And then let's just look in here. Is anyone not happy? Yeah, the meerkats? No, there are not meerkats. Lemurs, binturongs, and pangolins are not happy. Why are you not happy? It is too cold. Yes, see, this is exactly why I checked it now while it's snowing. That looks really cute. Did you shove a bunch of vegetables in there and now you're desperately trying to yank them out? You're having fun. Okay, heaters. I blew you underground because you are not pretty. Last freezing animal. <laughs> we have leaves flying everywhere. You're so cute. I love these pangolins. I think I have a special love for the animals that, you know, may not be 
consider traditionally cute, like these little guys. What am I doing? Heaters! Okay, so all the animals have heaters if they need them. I also realized that pretty much everyone has had babies. The wet pandas have had two babies. I think about half of the lemurs have also had babies, so I have an absolute metric lemur ton in here. Also, both the tortoises had babies, and that did sort of uh, get them really close to their space need. I have not given these any contraception because what I'm actually planning on doing is letting them have another litter of babies and then just removing the adults. You're not dead, are you? You're just sleeping in a super weird position. Yes, because if I just fill these places full of babies, they will keep attracting people for 25 years because that's how long they're tiny and cute. And the parents can be moved to the warehouse and uh, live to breed another day. I'm not often a fan of the albino animals, but Okay, you actually look super terrifying close up. Okie dokie. Are you a thief? What about you? You? Oh, you? What about you? I'm going to pick your pocket. No, you're not. And with this view of a boxy zoo, I am going to go to bed and I will be back tomorrow. Good morning. Or whatever the heck time it is when and where you are. Great, the fence is broken before any animals are even in there. Let's get some cuties. Nah, look at that little stinker. One adult has a very, very tiny space requirement. Two adults would be on the yellow list. Two adults and the maximum number of babies, which is five, would be... Uh... Difficult? Seeing as they're quite small, I'm gonna breed them. I want to do like a temperate slash taiga North American looking area for these little things. First, let's get them their terrain. I'm gonna click log because I really, really, really want this thing, even though it's gonna take up a lot of their traversable area. So then why would I want it? Because I want those gorgeous, beautiful mushrooms growing off it. We're gonna turn it that way because the cut off end is ugly. Then I'm gonna prop this one up on a rock and I'm hoping they'll be able to walk up that thing. Because that would be super awesome. Ooh, pretty. Wait, how much plant stuff do you want? You don't give a hoot. Okay, so let's then grab the mush. My machine lost a video file. Don't know how it happens, but seems to happen to me a lot. Now, in the meantime, I have moved the koalas. I simply blueprinted the habitat and basically copied it in here, moved the animals, and deleted the other one. And the reason why I did that, first of all, I want all of the Australian animals sort of together, but more importantly, I wanted the red foxes next to the other foxes. But first, let me show you the habitat I was building when my camera died. Here we are, the cute little stinkers. I put these mushrooms in the log like I said I was going to do, and it looks kind of okay, but also a little bit weird. So these guys have sort of a foresty looking exhibitat with some uh, trees made out of logs and bushes up against the back. And they have all the space they need, and they're super happy. Are you playing with your feeder? They were slightly challenging because I wanted to give them enough space for also babies, so they have two caves, and also this weird conglomerate of wood pieces. And next to the stinkers! 
look, they have the raccoons and they need water. <gasps> they have a baby raccoon. Hey, don't, not the stove. I don't want to look at the tiny. Wow, you're very slinky looking. Yeah, so their space is a little... Oh, and they also need more water when they have babies. I mean, they're still at 92% joy, but, but, but... Yeah, so these guys were challenging. I actually had to put in an extra layer inside their little cave here, because if I didn't, they did not have enough space at all, even for two adults and no babies. And they need climbing as well. Now that they have, because I put up this tree and I put up that log and I put up the dead thing over here. <laughs> nah, there's actually a little raccoon up in there. Anyway, I had enough water actually for, for what they need now, but I reduced that in order to give them more land and now they don't have enough land or enough water. So that's interesting. But even with just a little bit less than they really should have, we're still above 90% welfare, so I'm gonna take that as a win. Wow, you're very jumpy. Look at that cute little family. Aww. And now next to the two black and white masked looking creatures, we're gonna have another black and white masked looking creature in the next episode. We're putting the badger in there. But the reason we moved the koalas, the red fox. These guys were challenging because they have a space need of a bit over 300 square meters if I want them to have babies, which, um, can you like maybe remove the rotting koala food, please? Oh, you stretching. Yes, so I gave them a cave and what I was trying to do here was make it look more like, um, like soil, actually. It's a plateau, which is why I put in the roots, because in nature you would need something to hold up the soil. Now what I used here, apart from the roots, actually, let's go look at that, are these, these aquatic faux rock steps that I just flipped sideways. Because if you had, if you had soil this steep, it would probably look like that because of the rain. The rain would be running down and just, yeah. Uh, no, 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 bad fox. So I used the faux rocks and the mulch, sort of sank that in there. I did a lot of sinking in mulch up here. Yeah, so I'm quite happy with the fox habit. They seem to really like it up here. And this is a kind of boring looking inside, but the foxes don't care and the people can't look in there except Maybe I should change the blue. And then I built a bridge. Because this part over here does not look like nature. I gave up on... <laughs> no, he's, he's so cute. <laughs> yes, this part does not look like nature. I gave up on making it look like nature. And just gave them a like wooden thing that they can walk on. What I wanted to do originally was just use one of the bridges that are already in the game. But apparently they... um are coded as climbable, not walkable. So the foxes can't actually use them. So I had to build my own. I just, I really like the way it looked with this kind of hanging bridge. So I took some planks and these metal thingies and these poles and some ropes. And these things are just a bunch of knots stacked on top of each other because there is no rope short enough to just stick down through these things. So now, Pause, you're very fast and difficult to click. They have 313 square meters. So that's a lot of space and that means more breeding foxes in boxes. Mechanic search complete. That was it. Three exhibitats with a kind of a northern woods feeling. And of course we have the wombats. They have an exhibit hat with a completely different look because, well, they are from a completely different continent. <laughs> look at this little wiggle butt. <laughs> Whee! Oh, they're adorable. I really, really hope that I get baby wombat in here sometime soon. Wait, common wombat is about to have offspring? That's what you tell me right after I say I want baby wombat. Okay, let's fast forward. It's a baby. 
I wanted to see a baby wombat, and I said I wanted to see a wombat eating a watermelon. <laughs> well, with this view of food coma wombat family, my joy is complete. And so is this episode. What? What? What is this? Who is... Huh? Oh, because everyone's running away from something that's apparently super terrifying. Who escaped? The red fox has... How did the red fox escape? The red fox did not escape! The red fox is right here! It has not escaped. I don't get it. Everybody's freaking out, letting go of their balloons and just running like heck because the red fox has escaped and the red fox has in fact not escaped. They're right here. They stand right here. And then they randomly panic. And these people are fine until they reach there. No one has escaped. Emergency cap. It's inside the habitat. What the? I mean, at least they got rid of the stinking, rotting koala food. And we have a billion balloons floating in the air. So many balloons.